At a time when Boeing is under pressure to redefine its wide-body strategy, the company is advancing plans for what it describes as its most ambitious passenger aircraft concept yet, the Boeing 77710. This plane is intended to be the largest twin-engine jet ever proposed, and Boeing views its role as critical to regaining strength in the long-haul market over the next decade. The 77710 is a planned variant within Boeing's 777X program. Boeing has described it as the largest twin-engine passenger aircraft it intends to offer. The aircraft is proposed as a stretch of the 779, designed to carry more passengers on the high-density long-haul routes. Boeing has stated that the 77710 is meant to serve markets once dominated by very large four-engine aircraft, which airlines have been retiring in increasing numbers. The concept relies on twin-engine certification rather than four engines. Boeing intends the aircraft to be powered by the General Electric GE-9X, which is already under development for the 777. The GE-9X is designed to deliver more than 100,000 pounds of thrust and meet current noise and emission standards. Boeing's planning assumes that two such engines would provide sufficient performance to support the aircraft's proposed size and weight while maintaining long-range capability. A central element of Boeing's plan is the new composite wing developed for the 777X family. The wing has a larger span than previous Boeing commercial aircraft and is built using carbon fiber composite materials. Boeing has stated that this wing is intended to improve aerodynamic efficiency and reduce fuel burn compared with earlier 77710 models. Because the full wingspan exceeds standard airport gate limits, Folding wingtips are incorporated into the design to maintain compatibility with existing airport infrastructure. The 77710 is intended to prioritize seating capacity and seat mile economics rather than maximum range alone. Boeing has indicated that the aircraft is planned for routes where demand consistently exceeds what smaller wide-body aircraft can efficiently handle. These routes typically connect major global hubs with limited airport slot availability. The design assumes airlines would configure the aircraft with higher passenger density to reduce cost per seat. Boeing's planning reflects a shift in airline fleet strategies. Many carriers are retiring Airbus A380 and older Boeing 747s due to maintenance complexity and fuel consumption. At the same time, large numbers of Boeing 777-300ER aircraft are expected to reach retirement age over the next decade. Boeing has positioned the 77710 as a proposed replacement for these aircraft categories, offering similar capacity with fewer engines and lower operating complexity. Cabin design concepts for the 77710 are based on the wider 779 fuselage cross-section. Boeing has indicated that this allows airlines to maintain aisle width while increasing seating density. The aircraft is planned to support modern environmental control systems, including lower cabin altitude and improved humidity compared with earlier widebodies. These features are intended to align with passenger comfort expectations on long-haul flights, though final configurations would depend on airline choices. From a program perspective, the 77710 is not expected to enter service before the 779. Boeing has stated that certification of the 777 is a prerequisite for advancing additional variants. The 777 is therefore treated as a longer-term element of Boeing's wide-body roadmap rather than a near-term delivery program. Airlines evaluating the concept have done so with timeframes extending into the next decade. Competitive positioning is a key factor in Boeing's planning. Airbus does not currently offer an aircraft that directly matches the proposed size and capacity of the 777. The A350-1000 is smaller and optimized for different mission profiles, while production of the A380 has ended. Boeing's strategy assumes there will remain a limited but stable demand for very large twin-engine aircraft serving high-traffic routes between major hubs. Environmental and regulatory considerations also shape the program's intent. 
Boeing has stated that the 777X family is designed to deliver double-digit improvements in fuel efficiency compared with earlier 777-10 variants. These improvements are intended to support airline compliance with tightening emission standards and rising fuel costs. The 777-10 concept assumes that these efficiency gains would scale with the aircraft's larger size. The delays experienced by the 777X program have influenced how Boeing frames the 777. The company has emphasized applying lessons learned from certification, production, and supply chain challenges to future variants. This approach suggests that Boeing views the 777 as a refinement of an existing platform rather than a clean sheet aircraft. Boeing's bet on the 777 is based on a specific view of long haul travel. The company assumes that while point to point travel will continue to grow, major global hubs will still require very large aircraft to manage passenger volumes efficiently. The 777-10 is intended to serve that role as a planned high-capacity twin-engine aircraft within Boeing's long-term commercial strategy. Boeing is missing from a major airline decision, and that absence is now impossible to ignore. American Airlines has confirmed plans that move forward without a Boeing aircraft in a key part of its future network. The airline will rely on an Airbus jet for long flights that Boeing's narrow-body planes cannot operate signaling a shift that is already reshaping how airlines think about long-distance routes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, where we have arrived after a 4,600-mile, 11-hour, non-stop flight from Hamburg, Germany. This aircraft, 303NY, is the first Airbus 321XLR aircraft to deliver non-stop to the United States. American is proud to be the first U.S. airline to welcome this game-changing aircraft into our fleet, and we look forward to the new opportunities this plane unlocks for us. The jet is called the A321XLR, and Airbus lists its range at about 4,700 nautical miles. That distance makes non-stop flights from the U.S. East Coast to parts of Western Europe possible with just one aisle. Airlines are adjusting plans, and Boeing has no similar aircraft ready. The A321XLR is a derivative of the A321neo family, but it incorporates structural modifications, reinforced landing gear, and a new permanent rear center fuel tank. These changes allow the aircraft to carry significantly more fuel without reducing passenger capacity. Industry data shows that wide-body aircraft are often uneconomical on thinner long-haul routes, where demand does not justify higher seat counts. The A321XLR is designed specifically to serve those markets. American Airlines executives have confirmed that the aircraft will enable routes that were previously not possible with narrow-body aircraft. In public statements reported by Reuters, the airline said the jet would support longer, thinner routes that match demand more precisely. The airline has ordered 50 A321XLR aircraft, making it one of the largest customers for the type. Boeing does not currently offer a comparable aircraft. The longest-range single-aisle jet in Boeing's lineup is the 737-10, which has a significantly shorter range than the A321XLR. Boeing studied a new aircraft category known as the New Midsize Airplane, or NMA, for several years. The project was shelved in 2020 as Boeing shifted resources to managing the 737 MAX crisis and reducing debt. The company has not launched a replacement program since then. The absence of a Boeing competitor has operational consequences. Airlines planning transcontinental or transatlantic narrowbody routes have limited options. Reuters has reported that several carriers, including United Airlines and JetBlue, have already committed to the A321XLR for similar missions. American Airlines' decision reinforces that trend within the U.S. market. Fleet planning data shows that American Airlines has been reducing its wide-body exposure on certain routes while increasing narrow-body efficiency. The A321XLR fits into that strategy by allowing lower trip costs while maintaining long-range capability. Operating cost figures published by aviation analysts indicate that narrow-body aircraft consume less fuel per trip than wide bodies on comparable distances, even when carrying fewer passengers. For Boeing, the implications extend beyond a single airline. Aircraft programs typically span decades. Once an airline invests in a specific aircraft family, 
Switching manufacturers involves retraining pilots, modifying maintenance infrastructure, and renegotiating supplier contracts. Those barriers make reversals uncommon. Industry analysts quoted by Reuters have noted that Airbus has effectively locked in a segment of the market that Boeing once aimed to address with the NMA concept. The competitive imbalance is reflected in order books. As of late 2024, Airbus reported more than 500 orders for the A321XLR across multiple global airlines. Boeing has no aircraft formally positioned to compete in that range category. Boeing executives have acknowledged the gap in public forums, but have not announced a launch timeline for a new aircraft. The situation unfolds against a broader backdrop of supply chain constraints and certification challenges. The A321XLR itself has faced delays due to regulatory scrutiny over fuel tank fire safety requirements. Airbus has stated that certification is expected in 2025. Despite these delays, U.S. airlines have not canceled orders. Instead, they have adjusted delivery timelines while maintaining commitments. American Airlines has confirmed it is aligning internal resources to support the aircraft's introduction. That includes simulator planning, maintenance provisioning, and route analysis. Reuters reported that the airline views the A321XLR as a key component of its future international growth strategy from secondary U.S. hubs. The development arrives as Boeing continues to focus on stabilizing production of existing aircraft types. The company has faced ongoing oversight from U.S. regulators following manufacturing quality issues reported in 2024. Those issues have limited Boeing's ability to launch new programs in the near term, according to aerospace industry analysts. Airbus, meanwhile, has increased narrowbody output and prioritized the A321 line within its production system. Public production targets show that Airbus intends to allocate a growing share of its capacity to A321 variants due to higher demand and margins. Air Canada has just dropped a huge bombshell on Boeing, and it comes at a time when Boeing can least afford it. Over the past few years, Boeing has faced canceled orders, delayed aircraft programs, and billions of dollars in losses. Now one of North America's biggest airlines has made a move that quietly changes the future of its Boeing 737 MAX fleet. Beginning in early 2026 and continuing through the year, every Boeing 737 MAX aircraft will be removed from Air Canada's mainline service. The aircraft will not be retired or sold. Instead, they will be transferred to Air Canada Rouge, the airline's leisure-focused subsidiary. The change is scheduled and documented, with implementation beginning in the first quarter of 2026. Air Canada currently operates Boeing 737 MAX aircraft as part of its mainline narrow-body fleet. The airline plans to fully transition these